from the uh, squatty jump. Hello, can everyone just hear um, the request of uh, our speaker? So somebody have dropped the question. Uh, the question is why are numbers are not written in inverted comma? Um, Jeremiah, are you there? Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, okay, okay. I, I just get the question now. So why are numbers not written in invited comma? You mean like quotation? So that means that um yeah, integer, that is why. And if it's text, you need like you need to like put those quotation marks just to show that yes, you are writing text. And also I'm sure with the uh, what I call it with the introduction to quotely, uh, instead of you repeating and text or number, there is a way you can like call it like a string so that you just start to make your code neat. I think that is you, like, uh, that is the reason. It's just because they are numbers, just to differentiate between number and text. So I hope I answer your question. So, uh, me, Akinola, I hope I answer your question. Okay. He said yes. Uh, let's let's make it interactive for me. Uh, let's let's talk to each other. Let's make it in more interactive so that we can all enjoy this session together. So we, we are all here to learn and so there's no need to be shining on learning something. Um um on the what is it called on the page um let me check on the um developer page for writing the code. Anytime I try to type to write the print in my stuff, instead of just copying it the one there and pasting it on the on another line, anytime I try writing myself, it comes out as error. Why is that? Is it that I'm not supposed to type, try typing myself? That puts it into the um, parentheses then for typing the message. This is my question. Did you get my question? Yeah, I got that. Uh, actually, I don't know the code lab you guys are using, but uh, I will encourage you uh, as you are starting to, to type everything that you are doing. Right. So the reason why I will you to do that is because we give you more room to learn more. One, you get to know what you are typing. So for example, today when you are typing data type of an integer to be right, and you know the kind of variable you assign to it at that data, right? So whenever you see something related again, you know what it is. Because at first, when you are doing it, you are not just copying and paste. You try to type it yourself, and when you are typing, you get to know it more better. Uh, 
Um, I, I guess the issue with pacing is that whenever it tried to type, the uh, it returns error. Yeah, exactly. Isn't that? Yeah, exactly. That's... Okay, so um, is it on the um on the code lab bar? Yes. Okay. Um. Uh, Bib or Jeremiah, what you trying to say is, anytime he's trying to use the code lab and he 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 tries to enter some, uh, maybe write some code there himself, it returns an error. So can you? Give... Okay. Uh, I don't know the code lab they are using. Can you share you with me? And yes. The one with development, uh, developer Android, the training. Uh, I, don't know. I don't know. Okay. I don't know the difference. Actually, I just have to join because uh, what's it called? Jerry wants me to be part of it so that I can contribute uh, one or two things. Today. So I don't know what you guys are doing. So, uh, um, the code lab we are using can be found. I will, I will share the link now. Um, right. G.co slash Android slash study. Yes. So um, I guess what might happen is that, um, you know, um, code labs are, uh, are, are written, let me say, pre-written for just a particular type of commands. So it is what they expected to type in the command. That is what the system will accept. Um, for instance, you know, I think the um, Cloud Study Jam 2 is uh, some of the same thing with the Android Study Jam. So, Okay, have you, have you opened the link? Yes. Yes, I have, I have. So I'm taking a look at it now. I can see the different courses. I was able to see new to programming, priority to priority programming experience. And I can see start Kotlin, Quant, and start Kot. So which one are you guys using? Start new to programming, right? Yes, new to programming. All right, I guess that will be the first one right here. Introduction to programming, introduction to Kotlin. Uh -huh. Hello. So, uh, I just think uh, welcome to this Kotlin, and I can see what the most of the what the called the courses that you guys have been going through. Uh, is it that after when you are done with the code lab, you try to take a quiz, and when you are taking a quiz, you, you need to answer some question right there. That's when it is happening. No, it's on the Kotlin program itself. That's what I'm referring to. Oh, the Kotlin playground itself. Yeah, tell me the link of the what's it called the playground you are using. That's okay. not good. So I was surprised when you are saying that when I heard something about typing on the code lab. So what code lab is? Code lab is just a guide that will guide you to, to build a particular app that build that that doing structure on the code lab. For example. You have a what's it called? Uh, create by the messages. So create by the message is just like a what you call a guideline on how you can take a step to do it yourself, right? So they give you like 
the what's it called the example of what you need to do. Maybe you need to move a button from one end to another. Maybe you need to write a what you call a print statement to print a thing, uh, whatever. So that's what Code Lab does a guideline on how what you are going to follow to be able to create a particular app. That's what Code Lab is. So now the IDE is what you are typing on. So then the playground you are talking about is more like an IDE where you can where you can write a particular code, right? So I don't know, maybe you should just share that to me so that I can see the one you are using then. I will see what, what is actually happening. But uh, I don't know, I will advise you, when you are taking a code lab, try to run it yourself, right? Um, on your system. Try to do the same thing on your system. So uh, there's this, what is it called? There's this belief. Whenever you are doing something and you are seeing the output, uh, the output of it, it makes you have this kind of mindset that, oh, is working. Let me be more. So give you more like encouragement on what you can do better. Okay. I don't know if you get my point. So try yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting. try to run it on your system yourself. If you are following the code lab, yeah. Okay. Uh, so sorry, guys. I'm back. I have some kind of network issues. Right? So I think uh, what uh, Ayodele was trying to, I don't know. Okay, what uh, the, uh, he was trying to like ask is about the Kotlin uh, uh, playground, right? Hello? Yeah, that's that's what it, that's what it's talking about. Okay. So I guess once you enter the Kotlin playground, you because I don't get the question very well because my mic, I I don't get it very well. But I'm sure the Kotlin playground is just for you to like learn the basic part of Kotlin, and there are some diction uh, vocabulary. A word a link that they also like created for you to like understand the many of some words that they are going to use, even though they are not even, even though they are not going to use it during the uh, showing you the basic of Kotlin during the code lab because yeah, uh, there, will, there will be a time that you won't even be using the Kotlin playground again, you'll be using your Android Studio to be creating the apps. So, but if I can like get the question again, so that uh, we maybe can see if I can help you out, or maybe Mr. Biba for any like help you to answer the question. Yeah, sure. That, that is the. Okay. Yeah, that is the Hello, uh, I should, you mean I should repeat what I said? Can you see my screen? Can I go again? Yes, yes, sure. You can see your screen, man. You can go again, let me just. Yes, I have. Now look at where, that place where it's written. Let's say I want to, I'm, when I go to another line, I want to type, instead of me copying and pasting, uh, maybe um, the examples I'm seeing from the, where, from the study page. Now if I want to, I want to type myself, instead of copying and pasting, I decide to type the printing that hello word myself. Now, most times it comes out that unsolved error. I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm not typing right. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sorry. We have not been getting you right for since. So there's something called syntax error. So what syntax okay. error is like a mistake within the words you are writing. Okay. So for example, okay. so I guess I forgot to type this. You know what is going to happen? This is going okay. to give an error, right? Yeah. So can you see? Oh, yes, I can see. It. I can see. It. No, that is syntax error. So that is a, you are missing something from what you are typing. That is why you are getting this. So there is this word that we always say that code we not like. Yeah. Like you understand, the code we not like. What you put there is what is going to show to okay. you. So that's what that means. So. Now, there's well, a mistake. I don't, I don't understand why. Ah, I don't see to get it right. You get? 
Printing. Yeah, that's what I do type. Printing. That's what I do type. It's not printing. That's yeah. What I'm seeing here is printing. I type printing. Oh, okay. Let me maybe. Oh, uh, maybe yeah. I should. Maybe I should. Maybe should add that. Maybe. There is print as well. Okay. The, uh, is it the high? There is no I there. Maybe that's the what you It's L. Okay. What is that? L. Okay. That is hell. Yes. That's hell. Yes. Well, when you say printing, I thought was oh okay, okay, okay. That's what you but most all the more I've done, all I've done, I've been copying and pasting, copying and pasting. Okay, so now let me explain the, the meaning of this print line to you. Print line means that prints are moved to the next line. So now print means print and stay on the same line. So for example, okay. so I have hello word, I have another print here, and I call it Okay. Hello, world, my friend. Hmm? So now, what this is going to do is okay. it's going to print it on the same line, and you can see there is no even space, okay, yeah. right? You get it? Yeah, okay, yes. That is minus. Yes, 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 yes. If I said print line here, yeah. so that means it's going to return okay. this one to the next line. Oh, okay, okay. So that's, yeah, I guess, I guess. So I've been seeing some of the, what's it called, sample right here, print, what's it called, something, something like a, the okay. messages yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that. So yeah, yeah, all, yeah. The, all the code lab is trying to teach you is how to, you are going to, what's it called, uh, what's it called, make a, a statement and how to formulate this guy, the string. Okay. You understand? So I can use this okay. to do whatever I want. I can do it in different ways, okay. right? But what I just need to understand is how it works, right? Now I've understood okay. what print line is and I've understood what print is going to do for me. Okay. So for example, okay. I just want to say that, good morning, my friend. Now, I already know that this is going to print on the same on the next line, right? Okay. But yeah. I want to print everything on one line. You get okay. it. So all I need to do is just do this. One, I can put a space here. Okay. Right? If I put yeah. a space in, what it's going to do is going to print it on the same line, but there will be a space between yes. both of them. Right? Okay, that's nice. Okay, yeah, I get it. I can put the space right here. I, do, I don't know if you get my point. Yeah, I get it. Whatever is inside the uh, parentheses is what comes out. That's what the result will be. That's, that's what it means. So now, let's say I want to do something else. I want to return, I want to return the puzzle and say, how are you doing this morning? So now, I know this is going to make a statement for me. So, you get that now. So now, I can use this to do anything. The better messages that they are telling you guys to do, right? I can have something yeah. like this. I can use it to formulate whatever I want. Maybe I can have to, uh, to be my, right? Then I can okay. have right here as well. All I need to do is just to understand where I want to put this. I can even do space space and make sure I put it at the center. Put emoji. And this is going to change this for me. You see that? Okay. If I see right. that it's not where I right, want I it, I can make an adjustment. Oh, 
So I see that is what this code lab is trying to teach you based on what I saw here. And um, let me ask one more question. That point, is it always going to be on the same or the state line? No matter mm -hmm. how much I write on, on each another code, it, it has to be on the same line. No, it's, it's not a must. You can see you get what I'm it's not a must that it can be on the same line. I'm, it's not a must. I'm talking about the point. The point is I'm writing point. that point code. Let's say. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. See that see the first one where you wrote point then and 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 then. Now let's say I move to the next line where I wrote, you wrote pointing for the one for happy birthday then emoji. Let's say I'm talking about the P. Look at that P. They are all on the same line. Does it have to go that way? No, no. Down. If no. I, hey, hey. Can you hey, this way you are moving? No, it's not, it's not a must. It's not a must. It's a syntax. Okay. So you actually the computer okay. understands what it means. But if you want to do this, you can terminate the line. Right? All you need to do is just terminate the line okay. to show that this part of the code has ended. This, this okay. part of the code has ended this. here. You understand? Okay. okay, okay. Then you can now yeah, do the printing that you want to print. Okay, okay, okay. That's very clear, man. Very clear. So that, that is what it means. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Very clear now. Okay, yeah, I so sorry that my network went off the other time. Yeah, I guess Emily, I guess that was very clear and very understandable for you, right? Yeah, very, very clear. Okay, so that is great. Uh Honestly, I'm not like that kind of well encouraged the way people are not turning up because I know that uh, we have like almost 50 uh, or past something uh, members on the WhatsApp group, but I'm only seeing like two students only from here, uh, which is like somehow tough to be honest. But uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Abib starts like this. So just like uh, uh, just like encourage you guys that say hey, it's not necessary if people uh, say okay because people are not following me so there's no need no these skills are profitable um, what uh, also chairman also say let me just keep in that one what also chairman also say yesterday honestly let's all also take that as an advantage to like build ourselves up. Yes, it, they might be doing something that is not good, but let's just use that advantage to also build ourselves up so that after school, we'll be able to like uh, stand on our own and take some kind of responsibility. So uh, Mr. Abib also started like this, just the way we started back then, I think 2014 or 2015, uh, is also among the first Android developer that uh, ALC, you know, Andela Learning Community is among the first set of students that is Android version one, uh, sorry, ALC point uh, uh, version one. So it was among the first students that gained the Android associate certificate from Google. So yeah, as you can see, it's not just like, is just doing it for fun only, also doing it as a profession. So it's not just take the professional course alone, it, is, it also bag it up to be his own career. So that's why I like invited him over here to like uh, code with us and also give us some words of encouragement just to keep up, uh, keep us going in our development path since we have already choose his own, uh, his own path and also uh, we give him the floor so that he will like hint us what and what we like need to know uh, on, on this journey of Android development. So Mr. Abib, uh, let us just use this minute before Mr. Omar will come in. Uh, 
<clears throat> okay, but before we go, I think somebody else is asking a question on the on the chat. Uh, I know in other programming language, space do not matter, but here there is a space. Prints space some code here. Uh, can you put more light on this, uh, Emily? Hello. Hello. Uh, what I mean is that in that uh, second uh, print line, there there was a space there. Then I know in the that programming language, so space do matter. So unless you put a uh, uh, colons on it, uh, quotation marks. Sorry. Hello. Uh, hello. Let me. Can you hear me? I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Yes, on that second uh, second uh, line. The space happy birthday. There, there was a space, and yeah, yes, yeah, yes. I know, yes, I know. In some programming language, space do matter. So unless you use concatenate to join to make the space, but here there's no concatenate, and there was space there. Okay. Uh. So there's something called string data type, right? So. Uh, string is combination of characters and space is also a character, right? So now this is what we know we used to know what is string, right? So can you see that this quotation is wrapping everything together? Do you get that? So now this is a character, another character, 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 Ever me to inspire me, and uh, I wanted to add one more thing. In programming, there is one thing that used to attack us. Most people are not that too familiar with it. It's called imposter syndrome, whereby imposter syndromes occurs in a situation whereby you are, you know, you are good at this thing. You are very good at it. You know, deep down, you're good at it, but the moment you see someone doing it way better than you, you start feeling you are fake. You don't know it. You don't deserve to be here anymore. It happens. It happens at any point. I don't know. Have you? Does it happen to you? Because yeah, the, the baba I don't know. <laughs> it happened to almost everyone. Like, you have a lot of people around you, so. Uh, that's I, I just tried to cause on that. Is this what you call uh, you know, Ibrahim? Me yes, and Ibrahim yes. have been together, like we have been helping each other. So, Ibrahim is doing uh, Coke Igniter, I'm doing Android that time. So, okay, and uh, Amit, the India lecturer in our school, joined both of us together. So, you see what uh, Ibrahim is doing. And you see what I'm doing. So his own is more faster. And the coordinator that is writing is using this, what you call another PHP uh, stuff to write backend that time for what he's doing. So when we go to GDG in Abuja, then I feel like, ah, what am I doing like this? Then I want to jump from what I'm doing and join Brian to learn the same thing that he's doing and drop what I'm doing, right? So I just tell myself, guy, don't do this. How if I learn another language? So I talk to him, like because I've already understand what he's doing. I talk to him. So now he now make some suggestion that is even way, way, way more better than what I'm thinking. He was the one that suggested that Laravel is better than what he's using. That I should go and learn Laravel. You remember me writing Laravel for my back end that time. So oh, yes, that's yes. why I was able to start from that GGG. Uh, what's it called? Abuja that we went to. That's since then, as I learned Laravel, come back and all that, and things was okay. So please, just encourage yourself. Don't let uh, imposter syndrome to to disturb you from what you want to achieve in your in your life. Okay, thank you very much, Habib. So uh, no matter how little you have done, even though if it is, I've developed Hello World, and you see someone building what you have done, you just start feeling, ah, this person, this person no more than me. Let me just run, let me not even not do it again anymore. 
Don't say that to yourself. Look at that person as an inspiration. That person has gone way beyond. He has gone through what you are going, you are going through now. Look at that person as an inspiration. Look at that person that motivates you each time you see that person. Don't look at him as and say, wow, when will I be there? When will I get there? No, 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 no. Don't do that. Just look at him as an inspiration. I have a lot of people that really inspires me. Okay, at first I was looking like, I was looking at, I was having that same inspiration, like, how can I get there? What can I do to get there? People like uh, Shagun Fami said they're all GDEs, uh, Mo Yinu Lua, yes, so. people, like Ire, people like Ire, all those ones. At first I was looking at, when will I get there? When will I get there? But I was like, instead of me thinking, let them be a source of inspiration to me. So each time I just feel like I'm down. I would just go to one of their profiles, read one of their joining, read their, some of their articles, then I'll now be feeling, okay, okay, yes, 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 I now know, I now know. So look at them as... Yeah, people, people are, like Prosper. Exactly, Prosper, Prosper. People prosper like really encouraged me because that guy started... See, I saw one of his pictures, like, one of him and his friend, they, are, they wore slippers, you understand? So if you look at that picture, you say, ah. So even this guy self don't have anything before. So and look at how he is right now. Um, I was told that all of them in, in that room that time, they, uh, they make it. And in what's it called? In uh, what's it called? Um, Dev Center. I don't know if you're in Dev Center. So in Dev Center, you will see the gig they are posting. You'll be seeing people posting 400,000 400, naira job. 500,000 in a job, you understand? You will be thinking like, God, what will I do to, to be able to achieve this? What will I do? 700,000, what would I do? But the truth is you are going to get there. Yeah, even when you get there, you won't even know that you are there because you see one more. You want more, you want to earn more. When you get there, it's you. You feel like uh, you, you are being paid too low for you to be earning seven hundred thousand there. I'm not lying, uh, Umar. <laughs> it happens. We are all human beings. That's all human beings. <laughs> so it's. I was telling Jacob this thing the other day that when when you are when you are making money, sometimes you get to a point that you have to take a pay cut. That will make you feel weak, and you feel like oh. How will I rise back again? But if you keep pushing, you get what you want. You get there. You you get there, and you will pass there. So uh, that's it. That's it for me. Okay. Thank you very much, Habib. And I think we are done with motivation. Let's go back to technical. So, uh, Leon, where did you guys stop last time you and Jacob? Okay, um, what we did last week was just basic introduction and we gave um, learners the access to the code labs and the, the, learners, the, the learners guide. Okay, okay. So, and through the week, I guess some have gone through and the beginning of the call today, we were able to answer a few questions. So, okay. um, I don't know, uh if we can just walk through uh one of the app that was auto built this week which is the dice app okay so i need to confirm have you guys built the what is it called how, is your, how, how many weeks is is this entire course it will end um next week saturday but we'll be opening to the month at the end of this month. So just in case for other questions and for few people that will be building their projects. Okay, okay, nice. So I think what will happen is, uh, let's just quickly build, since I don't have much time, I don't have much time. Since we, we'll be wrapping up by 12, I don't have much time. Let us quickly build the birthday card app. And next week, when, when we're going to start early, uh, we should look into the dice ruler dice ruler up okay okay so let's go okay
Okay, let me share my screen now. If you can see my screen, let me know. Yes, I can, can see it now. Okay. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to like assume, I'm going to pretend I've never done, I've never written any of this. I've never written any of this. So I'm going to be following exactly what they did in the code lab so that you understand everything step by step that I don't perform any magic while building this app. And uh, I will do this process next week so that you will see it again. That's for the dice roller app, because I will just assume I don't know anything. That's one, and secondly, programming is not something that you need to know offhand. You will need to know some of the key syntax, but there are a few things that you can easily forget that you just have to run to Stack Overflow or Google. So you don't have to cram everything. Your brain is not a machine or what is it called? So no need for that. So let me just put it, let me just put this in presentation mode. Okay, so enter presentation mode. Okay, nice. So the first step is introduction. What you learned today, um, uh, you were, 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 what we are, what I use an interface elements such as views and view groups, how to display text view in the app, how to set attributes such as text, fonts, margin in the text view. And what we are going to be building is this. So what you need is your laptop and Android Studio installed. Moving on, we are going to create an empty activity, which I've already done this already. Uh, you choose the language Java, currently not longer Java. And uh, when, when you run the app, you should be able to display hello world for you, but so I'm not going to do that now. After you are done, then about user interface, the user interface UI of an app is what you see on the screen, uh, text images, buttons, and other types of elements. It's how the app shows things to the user and how the user interact with the app. So each of these elements is what is called a view. Almost everything you see on the screen of your app is a view. Views can be interactive, like a clickable button or an editable input field. So in this code lab, you will, we, you will look with a kind of view that is for displaying text and it's called text view. So the views in an Android app does, don't just float on the screen by themselves. Views have relationship to each other. For example, an image may be next to some text and buttons may, may form a row. So organize a view you put them in a container, a view group. So this is our container view group. We have view group and our view group is constantly out. So every app that you have on your phone have a view group. Whoever app you're trying to build with Android Studio must have a view group, which you need to specify, be it constantly out, relatively out, uh, friendly out, linearly out, you can check them out in different type of view groups in, 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 in Android development. That's the native Android development. So this is about the layout editors, uh, which are going to be explained. We have the first one here, which is uh, the project window. Then the second one, which is the palette where you choose your, your maybe your text view, your button, your image view. Then the third one is the component three, how the, app, the, the, the views are being arranged in your view groups. Then the fourth is uh, it's a close evolution of what your screen will look like when the app runs. Then five, the blueprints. I won't be, okay, I'll display the blueprint later on, you see it there. 
Then the six is your okay attributes. So attributes to your view groups that are going to be in probably it's either you use this or you use your XML. Sometimes I prefer using XML, but I'll show you both how to do that. So uh, we are going to change the hello world message to something else. So let me just quickly switch to the Android Studio. Add a text view. Okay. And I'll just switch to, I'll split them and I'll change. That's how we we'll move instead. I will just show you how it's been done. I'll specify the text, which is hello world. Sorry, you see me using this a lot because I prefer using the XML more than the design. But here they are mostly going to be talking much about much about the the what is it called the attribute here. So uh, look at the list uh, view on the group tree component tree. Notice that there is constant layout and a text view underneath it. So this represents the UI of your app. The text view is indented because it is in constraint layout as you add more views to the constraint layout. So let me switch it back again. We have hello world, but one key thing you need to discover it is we have a one, a red, a red, a red arrow here indicating that it's saying uh, this view is not constrained. It only has design time position. So it will jump to 0, 0, 0,0 at runtime unless you add the constraint. So what this is telling you to tell you that is warning you that when you run the app, we haven't constrained it. When you run the app, the app with the image, the icon, sorry, the text view, we jump here. This is what it's trying to tell you. But once you constrain it, it will be able to show you everything. So we're just going to constrain this here and here. And we'll constrain it to the top and constraint it to the bottom and everything is now aligned and the error is gone. We have another error which has to do with a uh, hard coded string but we will fix this later on. Moving on. Uh, we are going to change the text again. Click on the text attribute where the hello world text is. Change it to say happy birthday and we'll press enter. So we'll change the text to happy birthday so if you want to do it here, just scroll down here and head to text. I don't like using this. Yeah. Happy birthday. Okay, they're not joined together. So we're done with the second part. Now moving on to the third part. Uh, I'll take you to lay out. The bed card you're building looks different than what you have in your app. Instead of the small text in the center, you need two larger messages, one in the upper left and one in the lower right corner in this text. So you delete the existing text and add two new texts and learn how to position them within the constraint layout. So we'll delete this to we'll delete the text view. We'll delete it again. And we'll add two text view. One is going to be around here. And then the other one is going to be around here. Switch it back. So if you want to zoom in or out, that's a tip. You can use the this particular to zoom or zoom out. So I've already added the text. So we need to add a margin to it in order to get rid of this, this one that's showing. So we'll click on this and we'll add here, what did they specify? I think they specify it to be, where is it? 16 by 16. So we'll change this to 16 and we'll now add this, make this to be 16, change this to 16 again. And 
you can see the error is gone again. It's gone, the red is gone. And we'll check again, what about the other one? We have already fixed this. We'll position the text view and constraint to widgets. We have done this, 16 and 16. Then the text is now going to be happy birthday, Sam. But in our case, Leon, is today your birthday? We'll just write happy birthday, Leon. <laughs> Happy bed. bed. Yeah. Hope I spelled the name right. Yes, you send me birthday gift. <laughs> this is the birthday gift I'm sending it to you. <laughs> so happy birthday, Liam. And uh, once we are done, you notice that the text the text has been changed to. Happy birthday, Leon, which you have this. So we'll now add position to another, the other text view that we add, which will spend, make it 16 to also. And uh, here is going to be 16, not 18. And this down is going to be 16 to also. And the text is going to be from so except as expect Liam, expect your gift from Habib. So I'm going to write from <laughs> from Habib. Where is the text? From Habib. So make sure you tell him that she send you a birthday gift. Oh, well, so and Habib is Sinzu. <laughs> So from relation, we have now added a position some UI elements in your app and we'll move on to the next, which we we'll add, we we'll style the text and we'll make this, the text size to 16 XP. Like I said, I don't like using this. I will just split it and just write my simple text size here. Text size 16 XP. Sorry, I think sorry, that's that six that six SP. Yeah, it's bigger now. So that six SP. So note, note this, just like DP is a unit of, of measure for distances on the screen, SP is a unit of measure for the font size. UI elements and other apps use two different units of measurement. Then still pixels DP, which you used earlier for your layout and your, your images. And uh, scalable pixels, that's SP, which is used when setting the size of text. The size of text, SP is only used for text, whereby DP is used for your views. So by default, XP is the same size as DP, but it is size based on the user's preferred text size. So you notice when we did this, it changed to this. So now the next thing we are going to add font family. There are different kind of font family. If you want to change the font, so we we'll just add font family. Make it uh, let's see, sounds casual. So this is casual, and we are going to use okay font family. It specify casual, but we we'll make it to sans serif light. So we we'll switch this to. Sans serif light. And uh, we will now add our text color to black. So we'll do this here. Text color, Android color black. Yeah, it has been changed. Then we'll do the same thing to from Habib. We'll specify the text size, which is 36. Text size which is 36 SP and the font family should be sans serif light and the color, the text color is going to be Android color black. Congratulations, we are now officially done. We have moved up. You can check, take a look at the code here. This is the solution and summary. The layout editor helps you create the UI for your Android app and almost everything you see on the screen of your app is a view. A text view is a UI element for displaying text in your app. 
a constraint layout, which is the layout that is holding the view group that is holding this text text views inside, which is the constraint layout. Then views need to be constrained horizontally and vertically within a constraint layout. So one way to position a view is with it with imagine. Then imagine sees how far a view is from an edge. That's imagine how far from the edge of the container it's in. So you can set you can set attribute on a text view like fonts, text size, and color. So what this is saying, because some people are really confused with margin and padding. So let me just use this card that he's showing here on the screen. So we want to add margin from here. We want to, okay, I will assume that this card is joined together. It's kind of close together to these cards here. This bunch of cards here are together, together here. So we want them to space. So this is, when we, this is where we use margin to specify, to open them together. We want margin between the two. Then padding, the, the views that are inside here right now, we don't want this to be touching. Oh, let's assume this dot, this almost is touching edge of this card, which we don't want. So we can easily adjust that by padding it to here. So margin is outside, whereby padding is inside. If we can just hold this two differences, margin outside, padding inside. Then there are links here if you want to learn more. I'm sure Liam has already shared this with you already, so you can check it out. Then the second part of the code lab is uh, we add an image to the app. So what you will learn is uh, you add an image or photo to your Android app and how to display an image in your app using an image view, how to extract text into a string resources, then how to make your app usable for the largest number of people. So what you extend, what you will do is extend the app to add an image. So next, you will set up your app, uh, which you have already do, done this and you add an image to your project. So let's quickly do that. Uh, where is our durable? This durable. We'll right click here. Or, yeah, right click here. Go to, where is it? Let me move this. Right click. There are two ways of doing it. Instead of right click here, you go to, Sorry, new, you go to, in, uh, I think, image assets, is it image assets? Sorry, I don't think it's here. It's not here. Okay, they changed it. They changed it. I can't remember the exact place, but let me go to view tools. Let me see, I hope it's here. Resource manager, yeah. Resource manager. So this is our resource manager. This is where we can easily add the image. I already added, so if you want to add, you go click on this add, go to import durables to show you where you are going to import it. But I already done it. You just click on, select the image and you open. So once you are done, it will take you some people. Once you are done, you click on next and that's all. I've already added the image already. So I'm going to switch back to the code. So let's go back and see what it says. We have already added the image, imports. I've already done that. And we can find it here in our durables, which is this Android part C. And adding the image now. So add an image. To add an image, what you do is uh, you select you select the image view and you will move it where you want it, and then it will now show you what image you want to use. So let's quickly do that. Let me switch back to design. I'll drag this image view and drop it here. And I'll choose Android party and click on, oh, 
sorry about this. Where did it go, where did it go? Why is Android Studio? Okay. You drag it and then drop it here. This dialog show up and you choose the Android party and you click on OK. So if you add it here, you will discover something that the image is now well aligned properly. So let's position it well. And if you look at it again, it's warning us here that it hasn't been constrained properly. So we'll just add constraints here up, down, then our left and our right. We have add the constraints. And if you observe, the image doesn't look the way it's supposed to be initially. So you see the way it looks, it looks like here. So, and we have added this, that's your, we have constrained the widget, which is this. We added it, made it to be zero, and you can see, we see, we see where we are. So in order to do that, there is what we call your skill type, where you are going to specify the skill type. It's somewhere around here, but I don't want to find it. I'd rather go to the XML. Try as much as possible to get used to the XML. It's really nice. So we're going to call our skill type, which will now make it center crop. You can see the image is now, that's covered everywhere. But our issue now, it's our text view is gone. We can't see them, it's no longer visible. So let's go back to the code lab again and continue. We'll set the skill type center crop and the cake image will now fill the entire screen as shown below. But you can't see your birthday greetings and signature. You will fix that in the next step. So the next step is, after making the image refill the screen, you can't see the text anymore. This is because the image now covers up the text. It turns out that the order of your UI element matters. You added the text view first, then you added the image view, which means it, won't, it, it went on top. When you add views to a layout, they are added at the end of a list of views and they get drawn in order they are in the list. The image view was added to the end of the list of view in the constraint layout, which means it's drawn last and draws over the text view. To fix this, to fix this, you change the order of the view and move the image view to the top. So you all you have to do is drag that in the image and then drop it at the top and we're done. So this is how it is. If I should bring, if I should drag this down, which is not what I want, what I want is the image view. What I have to do is I'll drag this image view and drop it here. And uh, our text, our two text is now visible. Happy birthday, Leon from Habib. And we have our two text view here. And we're done with this. The next step is uh, adopt good coding practice, which you discover there are so many, so many uh, error messages here that we have. No error messages, there's no error messages, I see. Let me see warning, this is just like a warning. So to do that, uh, when you add the text view in the previous code lab, and also you flag them with the warning triangle in this, which is saying that at coded string, happy birthday, should use at string result. So the purpose of moving your text to string is supposed to be because of translating. If you don't translate your app, if you don't translate your app, probably maybe probably uh, to French or Hindi or Yoruba or Hausa or any other language that you want to choose, or Nupi Pasi. Uh, any other one that you want to use, uh, you can move them to translate and right there when you want to translate, it will be done easily. So I'm going to right click on this. Okay, yeah, just click on the warning and 
hit on fix, IP by delium, which is going to move to string. You can see the error is gone. And this too also for the other text view, I uh, will fix it and, where is it? Fix, no, ah, I'm coming. So I'm supposed to show this. Fix, uh, yeah, from Habib. We'll click on okay and it has fixed that too also. Then for this image view, let's continue reading on. We have fixed this and click fix and also to extract resources to a resource name in as the string. I'll show you that later. You click on OK. And this is where this is how the streams looks like. Happy birthday, happy birthday, Sam. So when you're done, uh, you follow the same steps to extract the strings from for uh, the signature of text view and same to string signature text. So this is it. Then for check, check your app for accessibility. So accessibility means um, uh, for those that are using, for those that are, let me see. Why will I even? Okay, for those that are having uh, disability issues, for those that are having disability issues, trying to navigate your app, there's a feature in your app called Talkback, uh, it's a Google screen reader. So if there's an image attached to it, you can be able to tell them that, okay, this, you can explain, okay, this is what that image is and what it does. But for now, this is just for like a demo purpose. We don't need that. We're only going to set this attribute. Important for accessibility, we started to know. And the error will be gone. So I will split this and head over to the image view and change it to important for accessibility. We we'll choose no. If you want, you put yes, or we'll put no. And once we're done with this, I go back to the design. I think this should be able to resolve that issue. Okay, it's supposed to do, but I don't know why I see showing this, but this is supposed to handle that issue, which we have already done that. We added it here, accessibility to no. Okay, moving on. And uh, when you run the app, yeah, congratulations. We have now officially built a birthday card app that I'll be going to send to Liam. And there's a solution code for it here and summary, everything where it uses the resource manager in Android Studio helps you to add and organize your images and other resources. And an image view is a UI element for displaying images in your app. Then image views should have a content description to make your app more accessible. Then text that is shown to the user, like the birthday greeting should be extracted to a string resource to make it easier to translate your app into other languages. So we want to learn more the idea and want to practice more on your own. There's some few things that you can add shadows and the rest. So I will quickly take you to the strings where we move our text. So we have what we call values here and we have strings. So if you look at string here, what we recently added is, this is what we recently added and it's been moved here. So if you are translating your app, there is going to be another string for either maybe French, uh, Hindi, Igbo, Yoruba, or Hausa, any other language that you choose, create a string and you set it there. For each of these parameters that you set here, we'll be able to reflect there so that when you translate your app and you run it, you should be able to display the language on that app that you desire it to. And I think, yeah, we are done. So like I said, next week we'll continue we'll build the dice ruler app next week. Hope I wasn't that too rushing. I'm going to stop. No, here. no, no, no. 
Okay, I know if we are clear. If you have any other questions, you can share it in your here. Okay, so someone comment.